Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Prayer and Devotion. Happy Friday. Um, if this is your first time, my name is Hilary Gooding. I'm the pastoral intern at the United Methodist Church in Brunswick. And today, our devotion is about forgiveness. And we're looking at Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 through 25. Um, which says, So then, if you are bringing your offering to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar. Go and be reconciled with your brother first, and then come back and present your offering. Come to terms with your opponent in good time, while you are still on the way to court with him. And the devotional says, uh, this morning, I meditated on God's eagerness to forgive me, revealed in the words of the Psalm 103. As the distance of east from west, so far from us does he put our faults. In the midst of all my distractions, I was touched by God's desire to forgive me again and again. If I return to God with a repentant heart after I have sinned, God is always there to embrace me and let me start afresh. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. It is hard for me to forgive someone who has really offended me, especially when it happens more than once. I begin to doubt the sincerity of the one who asks for forgiveness for a second, third, or fourth time. But God does not keep count. God just waits for our return without resentment or desire for revenge. God wants us home. The love of the Lord is everlasting. Maybe the reason it seems hard for me to forgive others is that I do not fully believe that I am a forgiven person. If I could fully accept the desire to get even, to get forgiven and do not have to live in guilt or shame, I would really be free. Um, my freedom would allow me to forgive others 70 times, seven times. By not forgiving, I chain myself to a desire to get even, thereby losing my freedom. A forgiven person forgives. 
This is what we proclaim when we pray and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. This lifelong struggle lies at the heart of the Christian life. The love of God is an unconditional love, and only that love can power us to live together without violence. When we know that God loves us deeply and will always go on loving us, whoever we are and whatever we do, it becomes possible to expect no more of our fellow men and women than they are able to give, to forgive them generously when they have offended us, and always to respond to their hostility with love. By doing so, we make visible a new way of being and a new way of responding to our world problems. Um, so good morning, good morning everyone. If you're just joining us, we are talking about forgiveness. And I just wanna go back to um, a little part in the devotional where it says, um, it becomes possible to expect no more of our fellow men and women than they are able to forgive and then they are able to give um, and I feel like when it comes to forgiveness that is a very very big piece it's very very important um, I think that a lot of the times we can get to a place of anger and resentment when we put too much on people or we have an idea or expectation of what they should be and what they should do um, and when they fall short we're angry um, when they treat us not how we think that they should treat us but um, other in, in a different way we're angry um, but a lot of what's making us upset and a lot of what's making us angry is our own expectations for other people I think that if we remove those expectations especially if um, you know this is their third fourth time apologizing for something um, Forgive them for, for where they are falling short, but don't try to hold them to that same um, standard where they are falling short from because it's just, you know, creating a place where you're angry at them and they're falling short and there's resentment and that kind of thing. I think that it, it is healthy when you're forgiving to n not expect them to be something. Let them be who they are and when they're not falling short of anything anymore. I think that that's a beautiful way to have a healthier relationship um, and to, to make each of you a bit happier because sometimes people push back when you expect too much of them. Um, but I think that forgiveness can be something that is, uh, it, it is a bit hard sometimes, especially if you're going to keep those expectations on people. Um, but I, what I love about God is that, you know, I know that I can come as I am, you know, and that God is not expecting me to be perfect. Um, he's just expecting me to try, you know, just to, to try and get to know him. He's just expecting me to do my best to, you know, abide by the word of God. And as long as I'm doing my best and I'm trying and I'm, you know, coming back and, you know, when I do mess up, I'm like, God, please forgive me. You know, I know that he will because he's he's not holding me to this unrealistic standard of you have to be perfect. He's not doing that. And I know he's not doing that because he sent Jesus for us. If he expected us to be perfect, he wouldn't have sent us a savior that's, that died for our sins. He expects us to sin. He knows that we're going to sin. And that's why Jesus is here. That's why Jesus was given to us. Um, and so I, I think that in that same way, you know, expect that the people around you are not going to be perfect. If they can't be perfect for God, I, I don't think that they can be perfect for us. So when you relieve them from that pressure, when you relieve them from that intense uh, kind of place, I think that you free up space and allow them to just be themselves. And if that's something that you want to keep right next to you, great. If it's something that you want to love from a little bit afar that's okay too but there should always be um forgiveness there and love and i think that when you learn how to navigate relationships in that kind of way you can learn whether it needs to be closer or farther but when you're learning whether it needs to be closer or farther i think that you're learning a great way that um that the 
that that relationship works and if it works close awesome if it works farther still awesome and there should be no resentment or anything like that you know and I think that um, that's a good way to to go about it um, <laughs> I hope that that was helpful let's see if the devotional has something to think about today it does not um, I would just say to, you know, spend some time um, reflecting on the relationships in your life, especially if you're not happy with anybody at this point. Um, look at what it is that you're doing. Are you um, ignoring anyone right now? Are you being mean to anyone right now? Look at the people um, that you need to forgive and, you know, forgive them and just adjust, just adjust your relationship. And that doesn't mean start being mean to them or not talk to them at all. That That's not, that's not what it means. It just means adjust so that you don't set yourself up or them up for failure. You know, um, uh, that would just be, um, my piece for today. So I hope that that was helpful. Um, uh, please join me in a time of prayer now. Uh, Father God, thank you so much, as always, for, you know, waking us up today, as you do every day, and giving us a chance to live this life, and, um, you know, come steps and steps and steps, miles and miles closer to our purpose, God, and to who you are calling us to be, um, if we are not already there, God. Um, thank you so much for your unconditional love, for your unconditional grace, for your unconditional gratitude, God. Um, I just pray that we can all be more like you, um, that we can all be more uh, Jesus-like, that we can also forgive others 70 times, seven times. Um, I pray that, you know, we, we find the forgiveness in our hearts to forgive others because uh, there are other people that need to find forgiveness in their heart to forgive us, God. Um, I just pray that um, we always know that no matter how many times it is, no matter how many times it takes, no matter how many times that we have to say I'm sorry, that you are always welcoming us back with open arms and forgiving us, God. Um, and I just pray that we, we can be more like that, that we can be more Christ-like, God. And I would just ask that you uh, continue to allow us to be lights on this earth, God, that uh, people would know more about you and more about your love and grace from knowing us, that they would, you know, meet us and be like, wow, these people are so forgiving, they're so kind, you know, what is it? And I, I just pray that we could lead them back to you, to knowing you and who you are and um, where we get that love and forgiveness from God. Um, and just lead us and guide us, help us to be strong and kind and wise, God. Um, guide us through the hard times, uh, walk with us in the easy times, God. Uh, help us to always remember that you are right there with us, beside us, um, keeping us near you, God, constantly, always, and forever. Um, and let's just end with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Happy Friday, everyone. I hope that you have a very, very blessed weekend. Um, Come to church on Sunday, log in, and join worship. There is also the um, visioning retreat, so you can also join that. You can just, I think the sign-up is still on the website, and if not, you can probably just email uh, myself or Pastor Cindy um, or Ginger, and, you know, we'll get you the link to join on. Um, so have a wonderful, blessed weekend, and I will see you all next week.